And what is karma to you? Is it uh, it is the way that God punishes or the universe punishes? What is it to you? Yeah, I, I would say it's it's a comeback around on how the universe, the creator, the, the energies, nature teaches you a lesson. And one of those lessons can be a, a loss of knowledge of self. When you don't know who you are, you can't look in the mirror and recognize who you are, where you came from, you know, what your people ate, how your people lived, you know, but you'd rather superimpose other ideals and concepts onto you and feel safer that way. That's a disease. Blessings, people. Welcome to Heal My People TV, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. I have a wonderful guest for you guys today, KT Arch Degree. Hey, what's welcome. going on, brother? Welcome to the show, good brother. Man, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, this is beautiful, man, and the reason why it's so beautiful is that, you know, we've met each other in passing. Yes. And uh, what I will say about you, brother, is I've always gotten a great and good energy from you. Oh, thank you. And so I say that because energy is so important. Yes. And a lot of people are in the healing space. And sometimes when you come into contact with people who are healers, you don't feel that energy from them. So then you like. Yeah. And so I just want to I wanna recognize, that, uh, recognize that and give you your flowers on that, brother. I could definitely return that because you've been nothing but inspiration from the moment I met you. You've always set the bar at a certain height. And I'd be like, let me give me a little step ladder. <laughs> give me a little step ladder so you I know, get bro. up there. <laughs> we shoulder to shoulder, good brother. You know what I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what I wanna get into because, you know, um, you know, like at the end of the day, this whole journey is about us helping people discover the healing capabilities within themselves. Mm -hmm. And what, and quite often, what I, I find in my personal experience is that I'm just a guide along that journey. Now, I will sometimes use the label as a you know a healer, but honestly, I'm a I'm a guide in the process. And I learned that by owning a farm. You know, one day I was out there farming and um, just digging up the ground. And where I'm at is so much coral that when you have to dig a hole to plant something. I mean, like, you're literally ch chopping through what looks like rock. And as I was putting this uh, black tie banana plant into the ground, I was thinking to myself, like, damn, I'm planting this. this I'm going to get bananas from this. It was this whole me, me, me process. And then one day I came back out maybe two weeks later and had grew to, like, double the size. And I was thinking to myself, I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. Like... <laughs> I got it. I got it. The plant into the ground, and the ground, and the sun, and the earth, and the divine divinity of the world essentially helped that come to be. And so, what I want to start off with is, what does healing look like for you? Mm -hmm. Like, not only for your your personal journey, but what does it look like when you're helping people, you know, navigate the space of how do they get back to being their divine selves? Right, right. Well, that's a great question. So first I would say when I deal with people, I always tell them that you are the healing factor. Mm -hmm. As you just mentioned, the whole guide element, because most often than not, the problem that people are having with healing is they've lost faith in themselves. Yeah. They don't know they have options. They don't they lost their way. They don't know what to do. Yeah. So all you're doing is you're providing resources, you're giving them inspiration, you're really dealing with their psychology. Because you can, you can give them a, a, a $1,000 worth of stuff, yep. but if, if they don't have an understanding of what they can accomplish for themselves, then you know, you're just going to have very expensive urine. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're going to have that Gucci urine in the toilet, you know? Um, so secondly, you know, it's a great story you just shared in regards to farming. I would say um, you did have a lot to do with that because you set the intention. Yes. So, you know... When we think about healing, we always think about ourselves and our body, but the environment is our body too. So we have to think about the environment that we're in. 
So you planted something, right? You, individual, intent in the ground, yeah. but then now you have the elements of nature that worked with you and together y'all were able to create something that you visioned in your mind. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah and, I, and, and that's exactly what I see happen every day I'm on the farm. It's like, I guess what happens is you realize how insignificant you are in the process. <laughs> and the, humbled, the example right? I give you is like breathing, right? Mm -hmm. We we say we breathe, mm -hmm. but you don't think about breathing. It's a happening. It's not a doing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing about you know the blood that is coursing through your veins. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. It's a happening. It just happens. And so what I discovered is is that. Along the healing journey, you got to get out of the doing and get to the happening. Yes. And the happening is you becoming what you were divinely supposed to be in the first place. Yes. Yes. And so that's what I mean by like putting the plant in the ground. It's planting the seed, which is the intention. Mm -hmm. But I think what the beautiful part is, is that, you know, it's like an onion. When you pull back enough layers, you get to what is called a nothingness. Right. But in that nothingness is everything. Yeah. And that's what I find so beautiful about natural healing. And so um, let's get into this. I agree, I agree. You know, um, I find that natural healers have a very unique perspective on health and disease. Mm -hmm. You know, me coming from, you know, a totally different side of, you know, natural healing, coming from essentially modern medicine right. to jumping off of that grass onto the natural space of natural healing. Mm -hmm. It really shifted my whole perspective. Yes. And I think what happened was it began with me having that healing experience for myself. Of course. And because I had this ease in my body. And so, you know, the beautiful part about natural healers is that we get to see and hear the failures of modern medicine from a very unique and very honest perspective, almost like a childlike honesty. Yeah. You know, the things that I would never get a patient to tell me in the hospital, mm -hmm. that when you come on to the natural side of medicine, they're like brutally honest about. Tell I mean, you I, too much. I, I'll, I'll be out <laughs> at events and people will literally pull down half their pants and show me a rash. Uh, <laughs> I, I get some pictures sometimes, be like, whoa, okay. Yeah, so gotcha. we get to see the uninsured, the underinsured, the non compliant, the, the underserved. You know, the generationally curse, mm. you know, uh, the doctor sent me home because he said that there was nothing else he could do for me. So what would you say is the biggest difference from your perspective mm. uh, between natural medicine and then modern medicine? Well, of course, there's going to always be God and man. You know, we was coming up in school um, in um, literature. You know, we learned about you know um, man versus nature, man yeah. versus man, and everything like that. So we're dealing with once again, we're dealing with a divine situation where you have an environment, you have nature, you have um, thousand year old practices tried and true, Jeez. right? Things that are passed down. Yeah. Um, your grandmother, you know, with her home remedies, you know, like you said, the farm, you have all of that. Yeah. And then you have people that study that and then say, okay, I want to make a plastic husk of it <laughs> because I know I can't patent that right? because it's wild and there's no patent in the wild, but I can patent this though. So let me see if I can take the 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 plastic husk version of that and patent it so it could be marketed and sold. So I would think the main difference would be that one is marketed as a product to be sold, right? And another one is actually something that exists for the reason of preventative as well as to assist whenever you lost your way. Right. Though that that that's where that, you know, the paths deviate from one another. Right. Um, in, a, in addition to that, <clears throat> then it being um, just a product soul, then of course you have the the aspect of ill intent with a lot of individuals too, you know, where it's like, hmm, I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can get you to sign up on dealing with this product for an extended period of time. Indeed. Right? Lifelong as, customer. Right. As opposed to just 
taking care of the problem. We see that in, with mechanics, you know. There's some shady mechanics. <laughs> Take the car up in there. It's a real simple problem. You don't know the car. They look under the hood. They like, oh, you need a flux capacitor. Yeah. You're like, man, I seen Back to the Future. Bro. There ain't no <laughs> flux capacitor in my car. You know what I mean? And then they they have you paying all this money for the next three to six months or something like that when it was just something real simple. Like you might have just needed some fluids up in the car. Just like yeah. you might have just needed some fluids in your body, some coconut water, some hydration, and you on your way. Yeah. You know? So I think I think that's where they separate is just the intent behind it. One has a more pure aligned intent with who you are because you're dealing with the creator, um, an energy that loves you, that that perpetuates you and is rooting for you, and then you're dealing with somebody else who's just not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would always always compare people because, you know, I was a chemistry major and of course I became a pharmacist, so I have this unique understanding of like chemistry and I just honestly I fell in love with chemistry because I had a family member who was addicted to crack Ooh. and I saw him take a powder form of something and crystallize it into a rock. Rock, right. And for me that was like Damn, how did they do that? How did you change the form of Powder something to like a that? Crystal. Yeah. And so that was my first intriguement with mm, with chemistry. That's wild. And so coming from the pharmaceutical side of things and then going to the natural medicine side of things, I was trying to figure out well, what's the difference? Because, you know, we were we were actually taught in school that, you know, most medications at the beginning of this pharmaceutical industry boom. 50% of them had a plant-based derivative. That's right. And so the vast majority of drugs were created based on plants, mm -hmm. the active ingredients in plants that actually heal people. That's right. And so my thing was, why don't we just use the plant? Because even when you think about vitamin C, what they're using is just ascorbic acid. And ascorbic acid is like just the, the packaging on vitamin C. It's not actually this complex of Multi, a multitude of things that are actually in the vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And so like the question I always tell people or the, the statement I always make to, make to people is that modern medicine is there to manipulate our biochemistry. Mm -hmm. And it does a really good job of that. That's right. And so if you take a high blood pressure medication, it'll lower your blood pressure, but it doesn't mean that it's corrected the root issue. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're looking at natural medicine, it's a correction of your biochemistry. Right. So it's correcting your biochemistry back to its default state. Exactly. And I think that's what people don't get about natural medicine is that, you know, the idea if you truly want to heal, you have to correct your biochemistry mm -hmm. because you weren't born with hypertension. You weren't born with diabetes. No, 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 no. And so it's important to know that there's been a misalignment. And so from your from your perspective, what is it that happens with us where we get manipulated into believing that treatment is better than healing? Right. So interestingly, as you bring up the, the chemicals versus the natural way, they copy the, the actual plants, right? So when you look at the molecular structure, I mean, you being a chemist, you know, there's always going to be hydrogen you know, as as the you know the outer element in all of these complexes, the problem that we have, um, and I know what I've come to the understanding is that all hydrogens aren't created equal. Indeed, you know what I'm saying. So we got we got protium, we got deuterium, we got tritium. These are all isotopes. So in our body, our body is a little prejudiced. You know what I'm saying? They they like to lean towards the protium side of things. Right. You know, which is just Sing, you know, you just got proton and electron. That's what we. That's how our ATP synthase runs. Yep. It's like a motor. It gets uh, fueled like a turbine, but you're using hydrogen protons instead. It spins like almost fifteen hundred times a second. We make an electromagnetic energy, right? We make an ATP out of all of this. Yeah, which is energy. Which is energy, right? But what we don't understand, and what I've come to understand, is that. And with pharmacists and with with this whole uh, uh, industry, they perform a function called deuteration, mm -hmm. and they replace the hydrogens with deuterium. Yeah. Now, most people might say, why is that a big deal? Well, 
deuterium is called deuterium because the do means two. So now you have you have two um, um, subatomic particles in the nucleus, meaning now the mass is twice as heavy, is twice the size, is twice what it is. That's a big deal on a microscopic scale. Yeah. You know, so you go to a gas station and you got a regular car, you're not gonna put diesel in your engine. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now you got ATP synthase that is um form fitted for proteum for this size, for this weight. Now you have this huge isotope getting forced in there because now all of these chemicals you take in, the proteums have been replaced by the deuterium right. and it's gonna start tearing your metabolism up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because so the think, bonds are different. Exactly. And because the bonds are different, different now it's gonna be much more difficult to break this down. That's right. This is the case in point where you mentioned before all things aren't created equal. Mm -hmm. All carbs aren't created equal. No, they're not. You know, so like when you're eating pastas, breads, and cookies and cakes, mm -hmm. that's not the same as when you're eating tropical fruit. Exactly. It's not the same as when you're eating ancient grains. It's not the same as when you're eating green leafy vegetables, which are carbs. Exactly. And it's the same thing when it comes to sugars. All sugars aren't created equal. Well, not now. You know, so if you take high fructose corn syrup over here, and then you're taking the sugar that is actually in fruit over here, two totally different totally sugars. Totally different things. And right. so it's important for people to know that although things are quite often, the labels that are placed on them are the same, it doesn't mean that they're not, this, that, that they, they are, are the, the same. same, you know, really important. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, so one of the things, well, let me first say this, you know, like I'm a break you know, the mold from where I was going. But because I really think this is really important. We talked about this a little bit before we got started on camera. Okay. You know, like, I think coming in, coming back to America, because I lived in Japan for about four to five years, mm. just studying natural medicine. And then I just traveled for a year, okay. just studying with different herbalists and holistic doctors in Africa and went to India studying Ayurvedic medicine and different places. And when I came back here, honestly, I was so excited to share what I had learned along that journey. Mm -hmm. And but I I didn't know how well received I would be because I started doing what I was doing in like 2010. Mm -hmm. And when I started talking about going plant based, not eating animal products in 2010, people were looking at me like I was crazy. crazy right? And at the time, I wasn't familiar with like a Dr. Savy. You know, so I, I was literally on my own. The only person I was really familiar with was Dick Gregory and uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Africa. In Africa right. And so um, I remember having my first event in 2010, and I passed out like 10,000 flyers, brother. And I remember like only four people showed up. But despite the fact that only four people showed up, in my mind I was like, you show up for who show up, shows up for you. And I went on with the presentation and went really well. But coming back to America almost, what, eight years later in 2018 mm -hmm. and deciding to write a book and um, put these events out, I was a little bit apprehensive about who would show up. Mm -hmm. And I will say that it, it was it's all about divine timing. Because mm -hmm. when I did come back, everything went so well. The book went really well. Um you know, people were showing up at the events, and in my mind, the the purpose was always how do we heal our people? Right. Because we're the sickest, yes. like bar none. Mm -hmm. And so, as I'm trying to work with people and find people who are like minded like me, mm -hmm. man, I I have found the biggest barrier when it comes to saying, "Hey, brother, we need to come together." Yes. You know, uh, hey sis, you're doing what I'm doing. We need to do it together because, you know, we're healing people in our own rights or guiding them through that process on an individual level, but we're not coming together so we could do it as a community. Right. And so, um, you know, we were talking earlier about how quite often, you know, a lot of people who are in the healing space who are alkaline, they're alkaline in their diet, but they're not always alkaline in their actual life. And their actions. And their actions and sometimes even their energy. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, let me give you a flowers because I have got, I have always gotten that energy for, from you. So I want to say you, thankful. 
But I want I want to ask you really quickly before we go to the next question, like how do we how do we break that in our in our community? Like how do we get away from like this separation? This separation instead of unity, which is God. Right, right. So, you know, it's it's funny because we, you know, we watched we watched all of these movies, you know, and the Hulk was dope and Iron Man was dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Captain America was good, you know. But then um you know, Sam Jack came around and like he was like, "Yo, we got a threat, and uh, y'all all all right, but come on, if we come together and work it, right, we could really make things happen." Yeah. So I think we we I think this is how it happens. It has to become a conversation yeah. because who's gonna actually make this happen is not us. Yeah. It's gonna be the people. Yeah. Because they're gonna request it. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I want to see y'all together. They're gonna push for it, and then we have to respond. Yeah, because if we don't respond, then are we really out to help everybody, or, or are we just focused on ourselves? On ourselves. You see what I'm saying? And so masking it as helping people, right? So ho- holistic is about what helping the entire body holistically. Yeah. We don't isolate this organ or this. Uh, the skin is messing up. That's because the liver's backed up. Yeah. You got eye issues, you got stuff going on in your gut. So everything's connected. Yes. So you can't have an understanding of how to heal the body holistically. And then when it comes to the community, we don't form a body. Yes. You know, in order to do the same thing. Yeah. So we're just individual cells. That's right. Yeah. Pinches off of God. We we strong, but we're, we're invincible like together. Yeah. yeah, fascists. You know, when we hear the word fascism, it has a negative connotation because fascists do what they do. Yeah, but the fa- fascia in our body, right? And then just the whole fascist symbol of the bundle of sticks. It's like one stick you could break, a bundle of sticks you can't. Right. Then you put an axe on that bundle of sticks. Not only does it not break, but you can also defend and destroy with it. Yeah. Same thing with the fascia in our body. We have this spider web that exists throughout our whole system that's responsible for all our organs being in place, our dynamic movement, yes. piezoelectricity, storing energy, charge, healing. We have to think about ourselves like that. You yeah. know, we have to form a network, you know, so we can innervate the community like the mycelium does. And then, you know, we'll have these fruit bodies of mushrooms popping up everywhere. Yeah. People could eat and we could take them on the journeys they need to go. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I think, beautiful analogy, by the way. Thank you. And I think uh, I think what's really important th- that you bring up fascia is that fascia is this wrapping around the muscles and the organs yes. that keep things in place. Mm-hmm. But it's also important to know that fascia has a memory to it. Yes. And so a lot of times when you're like that stiff person who can't, you, <laughs> you stretch every day and you're still stiff, it's because the muscle memory in your fascia, not actually in your muscle. Yes. And I think that's sort of what kind of keeps us stiff and also separate as well too is the fact that we can't change our programming. Mm. And I think the uh, as a result of not being able to change our programming, and a lot of that programming didn't come from us. Right. And I think it's really important that we start to look within ourselves so that we can understand that until we're all on this path, this journey of healing, not only on an individual level, but as a collective level, like we're not going to get anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. No. When we're stuck in our ways, we gotta we gotta progress and and come out of it. You know what I mean? That this is why I enjoy um, the mushrooms so much because one of the processes you go through when you deal with the psychedelic mushrooms is something called ego death. Yeah, it's the first thing because it's like, how are you gonna truly have a, a exchange with the creator when you got an ego? Yeah, really, really, bro. Yeah, yeah you go with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that that gets the axe first. Let me remove that. Okay, you humble now. Okay, now we can work out your issues and your problems. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's something I have it too. We all have we all have ego, and we need it in the type of world that we live in. Um, yeah. you know, uh, so we just have to be more mindful. Um, of what our purpose is and what we claimed we have set out to do. Yeah. And you, I'm glad you brought that up because my thing is, is like, man, I don't think I would have survived where I came from without my ego. Mm. And so, like, it makes me think, 
of course, there's a part of the journey that it was essential for. Yes. And so, like, how, how I interpret it is your root chakra. Mm-hmm. Okay? Your root chakra, that's where all the grounding, that's where all the protection comes from, the security. Yes. That's where the aggressiveness comes from as well, too. And I think for survival, especially when you grow up like an environment that I grew up in, then ego is important. But I also think that at some point you have to get out of the root chakra and travel up to the sacral, to the solar plexus, to the heart, to the throat chakra, to the intuition, and then to the crown. So you got to elevate. That's that's and I and what I find is that in our community, especially in our underserved communities, is that we get stuck in that chakra. Mm. And lower three. Yeah, the lower three, and as a result. We can't get beyond, you know, survival mode. Right, right. We can't get to a, a space where, like, one of the things I always think about with Dr. Sabi is that I believe that he really wanted to get off the conversation of food and get into the conversation of consciousness and elevation. Yes. And it was very difficult to do that because so many people were so sick and stuck in these lower three chakras. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, when you start to look at black health disparities, like the disparities in our community, I'm, I'm just going to give you a few here. Right. Black mothers have the highest maternal mortor- mortality rate, three times that of white women. Mm. Okay. Black babies are also more likely to be born prematurely, mm-hmm. which most people don't understand. When your child is born prematurely, mm-hmm. this is going to lead to all kind of health issues later. later. So them being born early is not them just being born early. No, it's more than that. Um, four out of five African-American women are overweight or obese. That's 80%. Yes. Okay? And fat tissue is not benign. It's not just this stuff you have on you. It's not doing something negative to you. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important. It's not important just from an aesthetic you know, right, 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 right. perspective. It's just function. It's literally creating more estrogen in your body, stealing away your vitamin D, et cetera. Two times more likely to die uh, to have diabetes in our community. Mm-hmm. Uh, African Americans have the highest rate of hypertension in the world. Right. African Americans are twenty percent more likely to get colorectal cancer, forty percent more likely to die from it. African American women are forty one percent more likely to die from breast cancer. African American men are seventy three percent more likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer and twice as likely to die from it. Mm. You know, and you start to think about dialysis clinics. This is like oh, in our yeah. neighborhoods. It's is like it's the equivalent of McDonald's. You know, you used to be right. being McDonald's on every corner. Now it's a dialysis right. clinic on every corner because we have different phenotypes. And when you deal with the negroid phenotype. That's the organ that takes the hit based on everything being out of sort in the system. The mm. kidneys get hit with us, yeah. you know. So, you know, the, when we when we think about Sabi, like when you when you deal with elders, you can listen to what they say, but you learn even more when you observe them. Yes, and what they do. Yeah. So Sabi's in Honduras. Yeah. He came to the states to speak. Even with you, you're healthy. You spend a lot of time on the farm, yeah. right? So our people, we're known for barbecues, block parties, um, um, what what else? Um, everything, pool parties, everything that we deal with is always some outside function. Yeah, we're outside people. For sure. We're supposed to be in the sun. Yeah. We say we're children of light. We say we're chosen. Black and proud. We love talking about our melanin, but then you overlook the functionality of the melanin. Yes. What is melanin for? It's there to be an organizational structure. It's it's a means to organize. I compare it to a movie screen. You go to a movie, there's a projector, people sit down, you look in this way, everybody knows the, the picture ain't coming from in front of you, it's coming from the projector behind you. You see the beam of light in the darkness. No one sits there and looks at the movie this way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. They're looking at the screen. Yeah. And that's what melanin does. It organizes the beam of light into something. It drops entropy. It brings order to the system so everything can form. We have to get into the light 
so that we can maximize what our melanin is supposed to be here to do. And the more that we spend, because all of these numbers that you just read off, this wasn't here 50 years ago or 75 years ago. So we know the frequencies have changed because now we have 5G and we got all these towers. We know now we have tablets and screens and computers and phones now too, right? We got blue light. We're we're not our, our our work was predominantly outdoors and it required the physical movement of our body and us standing up all the time. Yeah. Now we're not doing any of that. Yeah. You know, then you add on top of that an environment that perpetuates fear, because we're dealing with a huge fear campaign right now. Yeah, for sure. That's all everybody's talking about, right? Oh man, look at what's going on over here. Yeah. Look at what's going on over there. Have you seen the news? Have you seen the yeah. pictures? I'm like, have you seen the pictures here? Distractions. As have well. you seen you, the numbers you just read? Yeah. Nobody's talking about those numbers. It's a genocide going on right here. Right here. Yeah. And you have you have you're feeling sorry and have empathy for a whole nother group of people, and you can't even recognize what's happening right underneath your nose. What and the, the, you know what happens is. Quite often, people can extend empathy to others, but not themselves. Themselves, terrible. Okay, not themselves, and that's a huge issue, man. Like, yes. because the the first law of preservation is the first do no harm. Yes. Like you can't even properly love somebody else if you can't love first yourself. love yourself. Right. And so that's hugely important. Why do you think we're so sick? Man, that that's that's a lot to unpack, but. <laughs> But just, I just get you know so, give a, a synopsis. So I, I would I would say it's it's many factors. You know the go to is always going to be slavery. Like everybody always likes going back to that narrative. You know we, we suffer in the slavery it was abused. We're dealing with post traumatic slave syndrome, but we weren't all slaves. Yeah. And even the narrative of slavery as we know is not exactly how it was taught to us either. So it's like we always say, oh man, they've always taught us all of these lies yeah. in history and. So you think you think the slavery narrative is the one that's a hundred percent true? Also, no, there's some things up in there too. We're in the situation we're in karmically, because this goes back to that ego thing. One thing we can all agree on is, you know, at one point in time, it was a melanated planet. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if it was a melanated planet and we were all rocking and rolling then that means it was something that we did to fall. Because yeah. if, if if ain't nobody else here, how are we going to blame it on someone that ain't even here? Yeah. Right? So karma is serious. It is. It does not discriminate. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you take certain actions, you do certain things, it's going to come back around. And what is karma to you? Is it, uh, it is the way that God punishes or the universe punishes? What is it to you? Yeah, I, I would say it's it's a comeback around on how the universe, the creator, the, the energy's nature teaches you a lesson. And one of those lessons can be a, a loss of knowledge of self. When you don't know who you are, you can't look in the mirror and recognize who you are, where you came from, you know, what your people ate, how your people lived, you know, but you'd rather superimpose other ideals and concepts onto you and feel safer that way, that's a disease. Gotcha, gotcha. That's a disorder. So a lot of us are just having an identity crisis. We don't know who we are. And if, like you said, you don't love yourself, you don't know who you are, you don't know who your family is, then, you know, anybody that comes around and is able to increase that dopamine, then you're going to keep getting that hit. Gotcha. And then our people and our community just become... Addicts yeah. on different levels. Yeah. And I also think karma is like a balancing. It's the way the universe balances. Scales. And it, it, and it balances for alignment. Mm-hmm. So it's like if, you know, if if I was sitting here and then punched you in the chest, mm-hmm. and then two days later some guy at the gym ran by me and punched me in the chest, then now I have to be empathetic mm-hmm. to what it feels like to be punched. Right. So now I think differently. If I think to punch somebody, exactly, and I think that's part of what we need to get through to in our community is understanding that self love is how you look out to your brother, your sister around you, mm-hmm. and have enough empathy to put yourself in their shoes. That's right, you know, and uh, I think that's a huge part of healing as well too. So, w- w- 
when it comes, and, and because you brought that up, a lot of this goes back to our mindset. Yeah. You know, uh, and a lot of this has been programming too. Mm-hmm. A huge amount of it has been like programming, especially on the subconscious level. Because 95% of, you know, our brain activity is subconscious. It's not our us being actually conscious. Mm-hmm. Okay? And which is crazy because there's this whole conscious woke movement going on. Right. But we're more asleep than ever, right? That's more asleep than ever. Sleep. And so <laughs> what do you think is the greatest barrier to having a healing mindset? Well, I would think the fact that, um, you know, we have to understand what the mind is. And we always um, attribute the mind to the brain. Yeah. And the brain is an organ, yes, but the mind is not the brain. The mind is is something that is all-encompassing with us. If you were to take the sentience of all your cells and tissues and what you are, you know, it's that, it's that overall intelligence. And we um, have an organ that doesn't get enough credit and that is our biofield. Okay. Right? So we have a whole energetic organ that you don't see with the naked eye. Yeah. You know, you do EKGs and MRIs and all this stuff and you get remnants of it, but we act like it doesn't matter. Yeah. So you were talking about influence. So now when we deal with consuming heavy metals, heavy metals that are taken inside of our system can be seen as nanoparticles. Yeah. Nanoparticles can get manipulated by sounds and frequencies. Indeed. So now if I have a uh, 30 gigahertz to a 300 gigahertz antenna that can propagate particular waves to you, I can get nanoparticulates to come together and to form into particular things. Yeah. We are antennas ourselves. We can become our own relay stations. Yeah. So now I can program you. I can just forget using a television or a song to tell you what to do. Now I can use your system as a means to tell you what to do. Gotcha. And how do you even know that you're being taken advantage of and puppeteered around because you feel you're in control? Yep. You know, 100%. so, you know, being able to always say the same thing, we have to return back to nature. We have Indeed. to put the phone down sometimes, we have to walk away from the lights, we have to get out of the city because there's something called the, um, the inverse, the, the, uh, what is it? Inverse square law, inverse square law. And I liken it to, uh, being in the water and seeing a shark's fin. If you was in the water and you saw a shark's fin, are you going to swim towards the shark or more, or way more than likely? I'm, I'm going to find out how to take flight. <laughs> right. Okay. You're getting out of there, right? So in the inverse square law, it, 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 it deals with radiation. So whenever you see a high concentration of people that all got bi-directional microwave devices that are radiating each other, then... The further you get away, the more you you have protected your health, yeah. the, the stronger the chances of survival. So when you deal with these major cities, you got millions and millions of people, all got phones. They have now they are now becoming their own cell towers. Yeah. And you have to separate yourself from that pack and get somewhere where there isn't all of that radiation anymore. Yeah. And you can plug back into a natural state. Yeah. You know. All right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Now, today there's man, there's all sorts of one of one of the things you just talked about was the importance of how you feed yourself energy. Mm. And um today there are hundreds of diets. You got the paleo, you got keto, you got vegetarian, pes- pescatarian, flexitarian. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the vegan, you got about Ve- five or six. Vegan, alkaline, plant alkaline, yeah, yeah. What is the best diet and why? <laughs> What's the best diet and why? There is no best diet gotcha. because we're we're all our own, you know, and we have to find out who we are. So what I usually ask people when I deal with them, I'd be like, Where your mama from? Yeah. 
Like, what are you talking about where my mama from? Like, my mama from, she was born here. Okay, where your grandma from? Where your great-grandmama from? And where I'm getting at is the mitochondria. Yeah. Because the mitochondria is passed down through the woman. Indeed. So if I go back to your great-grandmama and you tell them that you're from uh, Nevis, or you're from Trinidad and Tobago, or you're from Belize or something like that, then that lets me know what your L haplotype is. Oh, you're 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 meant for tropical environments. So that so first of all, your environment needs to be one that predominantly has ultraviolet B. Yeah. You need to be you need a lot of vitamin D all day long. Indeed. That's that's one thing. You need water by you because all the places that your great grandma was from, there was waterfalls and streams and rivers and ocean. You need to see that. Yeah. Because when you when you walk by the beach, you get something called the Lenard effect. When you buy the waterfall, you get something called the Lenard effect. Yeah. When you buy the shore, you got something called the Lenard effect. This is when the water is crashing against something and creating all of the, the this mist and the mist are negative ions and mm-hmm. you're charging yourself being in this kind of ionic jelly yeah. so you need that around you you need those fruits you need that sour sap yeah. you need that custard apple yeah you know you need that um that rose apple all of those tropical fruits you need to be consuming those yeah. so if somebody says you know their haplotype is from another region then i go by that because we should be eating local yeah. You know, where we live at, we should know what's growing in that environment because all of those fruits, all of those vegetables, all of those herbs are going to be encompassing the code of the sun in them yeah. so that when you eat them, now you're, you're programming your body outside of what others are trying to program you to do. Yeah. You know? And so, but what would you say, plain devil's advocate, mm-hmm. that... Well, you know, there's a lot of African Americans, and some of them are aware that many of us were already here. I would say the vast majority of yes. African Americans were already here in the Americas before any Europeans ever came here. Definitely. Um, but what would you say to an African American who says, well, I don't know where my people are originally from? Mm. You know, so how do I then figure out what? the best diet is for me. So then in that case, then it would be a local thing. You know, somebody, let's say somebody's living in Virginia. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, you living in Virginia. My first question to them is, okay, where the farmer's market's at? Yeah. Ain't no farmer's markets around here. I'm like, yeah. yes, they are. There's farmer's markets yeah. everywhere. So then I'll look for them and then I'll say, oh, there's three, Yeah. right? Go there, talk to those farmers. What are they growing naturally in that environment? That's what you need to buy. Gotcha. That's what you need to cook. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So and that that's what I tell people their diet should be. Their diet needs to be connected to the environment that they reside in yeah. because that's where you live in. You're trying to thrive there. That environment is going to help you thrive, but you have to connect with it in order to do so. Yeah. And grow some stuff. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that That's that's a great... And you know, when we talk about diet, I'm going to always say, yo, you need to eat more mushrooms. Get some mushrooms in your diet. You know, get the medicinal mushrooms in. Get the culinary mushrooms in. Stay hydrated, green leafy vegetables, get the fruit in there, ground, sunlight, circadian rhythm with sleep, breathing exercises. It's it's all of these things that you yeah. need to be doing in order to create a proper diet. Because we think diet just means what we're eating. Yeah. And it's not just that. Gotcha, it's an gotcha. entire lifestyle. Yeah. Last two questions. Okay. Okay. Lightning around here. <laughs> <laughs> if you rule the world. How would you heal our people? Ooh, if I rule the world, how would I heal? You get our... three quick wishes. How would you heal our people? You got three quick wishes. Oh, man, that's on the spot right there. Okay. I get three? I get yeah, three. three. Okay. Number one, I would make it a law. <laughs> I'd make it a law that everybody got to get outside. That's number one. We have to spend majority of our time outside, and the baby's got to put them tablets and them phones down. Gotcha. Um, number two, um, in our educational system, it has to be a requirement that we learn how to produce. We have to farm. We have to grow. Yes. We know how. We have to irrigate water. We need to know how to do all those things so we can produce and make the food that we need. Become self-sustaining. 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 So we outside. We produce and we're getting everything we want. Number three. 
if 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 I rule the world and rule means you're able to do whatever you want, yes, sir. then I would have to make love and compassion a requirement. I love it. I love it. Last question. Because you are a healer, who heals the healer? <sighs> That's an awesome question. <laughs> um, I would say in my case, because I have children, it would definitely be children. That's the healing to you. Yeah, because you don't have to teach a child to be a child, but they teach you to be a parent. Okay. They humble you. You don't even have to tell them what you're going through, and they're going to say something, do something so relative to what you're trying to figure out. You know, it's it's something higher. Yes. You know, it's it's they they're really your higher self because they they're your future self manifest and present. So yeah, I would say. Out of, out of everything, um, I, obviously, other than the love for myself, I would have to say the children. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Well, brother, I appreciate you for um, joining me on this healing conversation. Yes. And I know that parts of what we've talked about today will resonate with so many people and uh, help us along this journey that we're both on individually, but also together now. I got to give you your flowers too now. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I, brought, I, brought some, I brought some flowers right here. You okay. know what I'm saying? Appreciate some you, brother. Some goodies, some goodies. Hopefully that, that'll do you right. That'll I appreciate do you, right. you, brother. Man, I appreciate you because, you know, the thing is, you know, usually an herbalist gives itself herbs. Right, right, right. Yeah, I see we got some histonic. We got here. some histonic right there for the right. jeans. We got some chlorella in there for them heavy metals. I got a nice little. Got that purple, fresh harvested yeah, conjures yeah, Christmas you, for you. But that, but that's that's the one. This is the one. That's the one right there. Okay. What you got there? Woo. This is the black bee honey, yeah. That's the nest suit nectar. That's you, that honey. Yes, Ooh, yes brother. Yes. I appreciate this love, brother. Uh, man, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here, brother. I appreciate you. So, thank you everybody for tuning in to another session of Heal My People Heal with KT, the Arch Degree. Until the next time, peace and blessings, and Godspeed.